Och nu till London, John Minson. Det i vår serie om hur ett dataspel kommer till. Ladies and gentlemen, the birth of Gary. Hi, this is John Minson reporting from London for Bit for Bit. A dark, mysterious castle. Deep inside its chambers, six brave warriors search for the four missing parts of the Sword of Albion. But their adventure is nothing compared with the events taking place here. High above this busy London street, top programming team Electronic Pencil are creating an epic game about that search. Benny, you're the programmer. How long ago is it since you first started work on Broadsword? Well, the original idea started back in 1984, 1985, but we didn't really start serious programming on it since about two years ago. Two years? That's quite a long time for a computer game, isn't it? Well, a game normally takes about nine months. Why is Broadsword taking so much longer then? Well, we had a few problems with the publisher being taken over, but before that they wanted a few graphics changing. I seem to remember that those changes were quite large as well. Can you show them to us? Yeah, sure. Well, this part of the game is going to remain unchanged. Basically, you have your six characters here, and you have to decide which weapons to give them. So you can choose from a portfolio here of different weapons, although the graphics need a bit more doing to them. Um, you pick a weapon, there'll be a graphics here of the actual sword or the axe, whatever you pick, and a brief description, and then you can choose to give that weapon to this character. Once you've armed all six characters, you then enter the castle. Jeez. Clicking on this icon here will take you into the status screen. Each character has a little window associated him. Along the bottom of the screen are the icons control these windows. If you click on this icon, the strength of each character will be displayed. And if you click on this icon, his, his intelligence will be displayed. Over here is the camera icon. With it from here, we can select which camera angle to choose. Now, there are about 70 cameras in the first level of the castle. Clicking on one of these will let you see the castle from that particular viewpoint. At the top of the screen, the overall map shows you the whole castle and the little white dots of it. This is so that although the characters may be spread around on the castle, you can quickly see which, where each character is. At the top of the screen is the timeout. If you click on the timeout, you can, you can give orders to each of the characters. The characters look like little board pieces on a big board. Selecting one of these will bring up a menu. And from the menu, menu you can choose various commands. For example, go to. A little white arrow gets drawn to show you where the character will move. Once you've finished giving all your characters their orders, you can then go and play the game. Did you decide to change this? Well, we felt the screen was a bit too cluttered. Although the adventure side of the game was quite clearly shown, we feel that the strategy part, the planning of the movement of your characters, where they go and what they should do, it was all hindered by the three-dimensional views of, of the cameras. Meanwhile, Anna and Aisha are at work on the graphics. Aisha, you're creating the scenery that we found in the castle. Uh, can you show us how you do that? Um, I, I will explain the menu system to you first. Um, we have a lot of colors to choose from, but we can only use 16 colors, unfortunately. So we must choose our colors very carefully. Uh, I try to use shades of colors so that it, I can use it in terms of shadow for objects, which will make them look more functional. Um, we also have a lot of different kinds of paintbrushes, which give different 
different kinds of effects. Um, there is a, a list of other commands here which do lots of other things like um, boxes, circles, or outlining something that we've already drawn beforehand. Uh, if we go into the main picture here, this is a, a s screen that I've already drawn beforehand. Um, I'll show you how this was put together. And a very useful command in doing this sort of graphics is the zooming in command. If we zoom in, we get a close-up of the picture we are drawing. Um, it's much easier to use your colors and manipulate your object when you get it closer up. After you finish drawing your picture, you can use the cut command, which in turn will cut out the picture you've already drawn, and you can carry it anywhere in the screen. Um, in this case, I've put my candlestick on the table here. If we zoom into the table, there we go, you can see that I've put dark colors under my candlestick. Uh, this gives it a more three-dimensional effect to the whole picture and, and uh, makes it look like there are shadows uh, on the table uh, coming from the candlestick. So at the end, uh, I draw things separately and put them together to create a, a whole picture. You're animating the characters who will wander through the castle, Anna. Yes, that's right. Um, I'm using a different paint package for my shirt, but the principles are just the same. I design my character and then change them slightly by altering small bits. And then I take each piece and put them next to one another in a sequence, which I then animate and see if anything's going wrong, and then I change it. To make it right. Basically easy language to learn, but it's far too slow for professional programs. So how does Benny let the computer know that if the player pushes the joystick right, the character on screen should turn anti-clockwise? Well, I have this programming system which lets me develop on a set of simple routines, rather like an upside down pyramid. So if I want the character to turn right when the joystick is right, the routine first calls another routine which looks at the joystick and if the joystick is pushed calls another little man to on the screen. And that's it. Let's give the game a look a bit like a chessboard so that the parts of the castle are rep represented by a chessboard and the little men move around on this chessboard. So the board could represent each room. It's September 1989, and at last, God is nearing completion. Hi there, everybody. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Very well. Great. Well, have you got anything new to show me, then? Yep. We've got the new look broadsword. Great. Let's see it, then. Here's a game board. As you can see, it's in the shape of a, of a room of a castle. Um, I think Anna and I should have done a really good job on the marble effect here. Now on the board of the symbols I talked about before, clicking on the symbol will open up a window showing you the graphics. Okay, As you can see, the graphics are sort of much bigger than before and you can really see what it's supposed to be. If I click here, you can see you go onto another game board. So each room in the castle has a little chessboard represent law and symbols which, are, which represent the important parts in that castle. Here's another one, and it shows you it's a scroll. If I go back, you can see the two characters here fighting on the board. So all the action in a room will be seen all at once. Up here is the control screen for the little men. I think it's a big improvement on what it was before. I think the screen's much simpler, it's much more elegant, and it's just a whole better system, I think. It's certainly a lot easier to see what's going on now. How much longer till it's finished? We think it's about another two months now. It's great, so early next year people should be able to go into the shops and buy it. Yep. 
Yes, well, and I think they'll enjoy playing it. Uh, we've put a lot of hard work into it, and uh, we're really proud of it.